Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is At The Helm Sports. I am your host, Derek Helm. Thank you for joining me for episode 122. Please be sure to follow and subscribe on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Leave those five-star reviews. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And in the comments section, we're going to talk about Live Golf today. So obviously, if you're watching this, you probably saw that it's Live Golf. So you got to be watching it to be interested in this podcast. But just interested, how often do you watch Live Golf? I mean, are you a diehard? Are you watching every tournament? You tune in just when it's on TV? Are you just checking the leaders on Sunday? Or do you not care at all and really you just saw Live and figure the Masters is next week? So maybe you should catch up on it. Let me know down in the comments section. But obviously, as I just said, we are going to be talking about Live Miami this week. The Masters is right around the corner. So whether you are a Live fan or not, probably pretty important to catch up on what these guys have been doing. I will also have an article up on thehelmsports.com later in the week, probably this weekend, probably prior to the conclusion of Live Miami. But we'll definitely have everything that's been going on with all these guys, everything we need to know about them leading into the Masters. So definitely check that out. But this week we have Live Miami. So let's dive into it. We have the course is Trump National Doral. Obviously been played on on the PGA Tour before. It's the Blue Monster, 7,500 yard par 72. It it is an absolute monster. I mean, this course plays long. It plays rather difficult. The greens are listed as Bermuda, but we could see some overseed as we've seen recently, obviously, in the Florida swing. Now it is in Miami, so it's possible that some of that Bermuda is poking through, but I I wouldn't really be too concerned with that. As I said, you know, Doral has, has... hosted PGA events in the past. So it's a course we're pretty familiar with. It hosted the Doral Open from 1962 to 2006. Then the WGC Cadillac Championship from 2007 to 2016. Before that was moved to Mexico. Tiger won here seven times. Last time was 2013. Adam Scott was the most recent winner here in 2016. He won at a score of 12 under. And then we have Dustin Johnson won in 2015. He was minus nine, Patrick Reed in 2014, minus four. So those are your last three winners here. Obviously, if you have access to any stat sites or Fantasy National, you can go in and and look up this course, look up some of the the course history if you look up the Cadillac Championship. But the most recent live event was the team championship last year where Bryson DeChambeau led the Crushers to the team championship championship. Bit of an interesting format, really not much you can go on from a strokes standpoint, but just most recently, I I, I do think that Bryson playing well here, even though it was a team event, it is a course that probably suits him very well, very long and and, and difficult course. So you're definitely going to want guys that that have a little bit of distance, but obviously Patrick Reed won this as well. So if if it plays pretty difficult, you know, there's a lot of skill sets that come into play. Bogey avoidance is definitely going to be needed. There are four par fives, four par threes, 10 par fours. Very, very long. As I said, fairways are really difficult to hit. So a lot of times guys are just bombing it off the tee, not really too worried if they're going to hit fairways or not. Average driving distance comes in at about 282 yards, which is slightly above tour average. But we're not talking about the PGA Tour. We're talking about live. But this is the information that we have to go on. Approach shots, 24% from 200 plus. So definitely going to have to be dialed in with the long irons. As I said, if if you're focusing on guys that have a little more distance, maybe it makes for a little bit easier of approach shots. You know, as we've seen Bryson in the past, bombing it off the tee and he's hitting the wedge while other guys are having to hit a seven iron. So just something to keep in mind there. Definitely want ball strikers with a little bit of distance. And definitely you got to be good with the mid to long irons here. Now, as far as the field goes, obviously it's it's live. We have everybody here getting ready for the Masters one week out. So Rom will be here, Cam Smith, every, everybody that you would you would think that's in live. I've actually made a couple wagers already, and I bet DJ. I mean, obviously he's already won here, so he he knows the course well. Seems to be playing better recently. I, I do think you can make a case for Rom up top. Bryson, as I already said, I, I think is a very a good play here. But 
I, I just I like where DJ's at. I like the fact that he's he's played here one in 2015. He's actually never finished worse than 35th on the course. That his other finishes here, 14th, 4th, 12th, and a second. So absolutely has torn this course apart in the past. And I, I don't see any reason why he can't do it this year. I got him at 16 to 1, and it's pretty funny. You know, obviously Liv does not do a great job promoting and and I actually made this bet two weeks ago because I saw the odds on FanDuel and I was like, oh, live Miami's this week. So I, I I made the bet, but not realizing that it was still two weeks out. So made it and actually got a better number because I think he's down to 14 to one. But I definitely like that one. What he's been up to so far this year has a fifth place finish. He won in Vegas. So already has a win under his belt on live. 27th and 21st. So last two tournaments are kind of meh, but already has a win, already has a top five to start the year. So definitely like where DJ's game is at. And then also I bet Brooks Kepka. I got him at 20 to one. That's on DraftKings. I do think that he can also play well here. Long, difficult course. I mean, that that's Brooks right there. So those are my two bets. And I'm thinking about possibly a top 10 on Bryson at, I think it was minus 110. So going to shop around, see if I can maybe get a little bit better of a number. But I do think this is a good course for him. I don't want to bet too many guys here to, to win, but I, I do like DJ and Brooks. Brooks has played here before, 23rd and 17th. So not incredible finishes, but not too bad. And obviously that was quite some time ago, a little bit before Brooks really hit his peak. So he's been playing all right this year as well. Doesn't have a, a win yet, but finishes this year. Came 5th, 12th, 12th, and 28th. So he, he's been playing good golf. Obviously, we know Brooks heading into major season. He's he's probably going to be clicking on all cylinders. So I, I do like the two of them quite a bit. If you wanted to go a little bit further down the board, I do think that Patrick Reed is in play here. It's a guy that's already won here. I do think if it plays difficult, he could play well. We just saw him play recently on the Asian tour and finished well. So I think that's a guy, same thing as I said with Brooks, as we get close to the Masters, this seems to be a lot of times where he's peaking. I, I think he's in play. I've seen his number all over the place, so definitely shop around if you want that. And then further down the board, another guy that has actually played this place very well in the past and also won is, is Bubba Watson. So he's, I mean, he started out, I think he opened up 200 to one, probably somewhere around 90 to one now. So if you, if you like some longer shots, I think those are some guys that are in play, but just wanted to get a quick pot out for live. Obviously a lot of people don't really care too much about it. Some people even hate it. But as I said at the top, I do think it's very important that you be paying attention this week because you're going to need to know what these guys are doing heading into the masters. If you're going to be placing any wagers or playing any DraftKings. So as I said, check back the helm sports.com this weekend. I will have a write-up of what everybody in the Masters field from Live has been up to this year and kind of break down their recent form and, and a little bit statistics, even though stats are few and far between for Live. But we'll we'll do our best with it and at least give you a little bit more information than if you were flying blind. But that's going to do it for this one. Just wanted to get a quick one out with a little information of, of the course and, and the field and what I'm thinking as far as wagers go. But that's going to do it. I am your host, Derek Helm. And remember... Stefan out there.